All right. Good evening, ladies and gentle thems. Welcome to another round of Femboy Feast. Tonight we're breaking down an entire chicken um, and turning it into a bit of a chicken roast as well as uh, some chicken parm. We will also be doing some pretty bone stock sushi, some, some, some gaijin. Anyway, we'll catch you out there. Uh, and thank you for the support as usual. Check us out in the Discord. Come play games with us. If you haven't subbed to the YouTube yet, you stink bad. And there's the throne wish list. If you want to support the stream and or impact the cooking votes. Um, by the way, one follower away from officially 10,000. So, ta-da! same place I actually get my tea from, uh, local shop, the head nut, double bag, freshness, it's very, very nice. Um, but yeah, we'll wash this as per usual. I'm going to make one cup because it's going to be turned into sushi. Um, very simple, please wash it in rice. How many times I have to say this, but people, it's a new concept. Very simple, excuse Sounds like a sieve, mesh sieve. Fine, right? Very gently pour this into the bag. There we go. Pretty much one cup of rice. Now. Normal rice, one to one ratio. Use finger method, if you know finger method. Uh, white rice, one to one. Other other rice, sometimes two to one, one and a half to one, it really depends. Most of the time, just do your damn research. So, we've been over this a couple hundred times before. Run it underwater, it's not that difficult. All right, and you'll see that the water coming out here, I'll actually capture some. So yes, I have city water, but if you look closely, you'll notice that water is pretty, pretty murky. It's, it, it's going to look hella opaque for y'all. It's pretty, pretty gray and washed. Um, but what you're going to do is you just want to, want to keep giving it little shakes until the water's coming out pretty much clean. Going to get all the loose starch components and rice dust and dirt and whatever have you out of there. So, coming out, coming out clear. A little bit better. But, nice and simple, that's it. That's all you gotta do. Goes into your rice cooker, instant pot, whatever have you. Right in there. Very simple. No muss, no fuss. Alright, if you're super lazy, you can just even use the same measuring vessel. Go on ratio. Be about a cup of water. So, I'm gonna give this a nice little swirl so everybody's not covered. You know, obviously, peak 
Very simple. Take too long. There we go. All done. Nice and easy. Don't fall. Cheese. There's more cheese I have to get. Well, I want this. This is chunk of salmon. But we'll do that pretty much. Alright. Task at hand. Break down an entire chicken. Like I said, haven't done this in a hot minute. But we'll get to work. I'm not going to use my good new knives on it. They're not designed to cut through bone. That's exactly what I wanted to avoid. Down, is the chicken is uh how do you say covered uh some juices down there up oh, some of this decided to go everywhere and uh as we know all chicken not ideal put on anything okay Yeah, oh, I like good beef. Yeah, I mean, dirty rice as a dish is very good, but, like, it's just rice. So, I'm going to take big old cleaver boy. Have anything in it? Wait. Take a second, just here and just oh, trim now so it's later. Up to cuts. No, I don't gen. Shelby's not fan. Really honest. Apparently. That's okay. Alright. Got all the boys out. Excellent. So, first thing I'm going to do is I want to take these drumsticks off of this. Um, just because I'm going to use the thighs here. I'm going to cut these open right at the, uh, right at the joint here. Should open up nice and wide. And if you're gonna spatchcock a bird, this is part of the process you're gonna do as well. Basically, you just wanna open. There we go. I've now exposed the back, basically, kind of wide open. Uh, much like me on a Thursday night. I, I don't have access to the air horn button. You're going to have to add your own sound effects, to be honest. What a dirty bird. Ooh. Uh, okay. Let me continue trimming this down. Like I said, I'm probably going to take the thighs for this. Um, or, um, that's going. Thank you. Um, for the 
pound of chicken. Kill my way. Also, this chicken is old as fuck. <laughs> Just so I can get better access to it and flip this bird back over. I kind of want to continue getting rid of this. I know what I'm working with. You can roast the skin. I might just throw it on the tray and let it roast separately if I complete it. But I just want an easy time getting the eyes off. There we go. Now you get your skin off. Just rip it and rip it. I do, because for the most part, it just comes off pretty nicely. I know there are some of you in America that have never seen an entire chicken and are confused where is the nugget. I'll get to that one later. I need to kind of off. If you're like a dog owner, um, I guess ferrets too, technically. Uh, you could just hook the skin. I know a lot of times they. Beth, I don't know if you can confirm your southern. Like, uh, they have like chicken skin treats for dogs, right? I'm not losing my mind. Damn, this one fucking cold bird. Holy shit. Um. Very important with this is you want to have a good sharp knife. Like, this is one of my better ones. You know, Sack got me this one. I'm just gonna leave it with some, some leggy. native population, but they also have a very large homogenous population, which is uh, Laos, Cambodia, so all sorts of really good food up there. I just wish this third one was a fucking cold. Holy dog shit and tomorrow. Drumstick. Okay. So, take a big knife here. In here a little bit. take this whole thigh area right no interest in being particularly pretty about it there we go i'll trim that for the for the lovely bounty later back half so if you want to this is the kind of thing you would put in a stock pot yep because there's there's not much meat you're gonna get off of this it's literally just back half so we will uh you know what maybe i'll keep that around and just boil it off in a stock pot and just make like a chicken soup of some sort. I think that would be pretty. I have to get that started tomorrow, but that's literally just throw it in there, let it simmer, scoop off the bones, and then reduce it if you want, make it a little bit stronger. I have some peppers myself and a little bit of lemon. By the way, chicken noodle soup with a little bit of lemon and jalapeno pepper probably goes a long way. All right, so there's that. This. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, I'll just bake this. I'll rub it down with something. Uh, but anyway, gotta get some some very solid meat off of 
God damn. Never mind. I'm not sure. Right. So we have a nice joint here. Very gently get in here. We're just going to try and fillet it away from the... So what we have on the bottom half here is the drumstick. Basically, you can just follow like the on the fat. That'll connect the joints. And that hold right over. Nice. Again, follow the joint. Let the knife do the work. Don't try and like plow it through the bone and tendon, especially if it's in the a fucking room. Open it up all the way, and bam! Got a chicken thigh right here. I'm gonna cut down to the bone. Put on either side of it. If I have one side free, very gently underneath this bone. One lazy batter. Kind of cut under it. Very gentle. Very gentle. Work its way out eventually. Don't want to go in with like a super huge surface here. Kind of scrape the knife along the bone. I'm right here. I mean, it's not going to be the prettiest, but it will be on a chicken thigh. Almost skinless. I mean, it could have been cleaner, but like, again, not really super clear. Um, because to be honest, it's a lot, of, a lot of grizzle and a lot of fat on that one. Ain't nobody like chewy chicken. Or, oh yes, my favorite. Again, you have pets that are obligate carnivores. Like technically, I think I could just give Freya that. Um, but I'd rather really, that bone got off. There. Okay. So again, with this, go against the point here or crack. It's just gonna open this up. Allow you to get your knife in. As you're cutting through, kind of take a look at where the joint's at. Almost took off. Oh, so, got the major body. No, that is true. Blood color. All right, any questions so far? I'm gonna do this process. Place right against the thigh bone. Hell. Oh. Just, this one's exposed in such a way I can just kind of roll right under it. Be careful. Time. And then basically, when when deboning a bird, it's pretty much well, pretty much almost anything. Um, the easiest way to get that cut again is you just want to basically hyperextend. Put it, push it or pull it away from its normal operating range. It should just kind of pop itself right out or break at whatever weak point it is, and then you can just kind of carve your way out of it. And just taking your time, making sure you're not going to hack off any bone or weird tendon that's still going to be attached to your cut that you don't want. This so, one, again, a little gangly. But hey! Yeah, two by two. Okay. So, if you really want, what you could do is you could flatten these out. For me, they're pretty thin already in a fairly uniform height. Here. That'll, I'll just put that in. But for the most part, these look pretty clean. Uh, the blood gunk there. But that's it. It's, is this messy? Yes. Is it required anymore? No, not really. Early days of the pandemic, yeah. We can only get like whole chickens and ch frozen chicken leg quarters here. Um, I live in an area, I, while I myself am not wealthy, the average household income is like fucking beyond six figures, like into the six figures very comfortably. Um, I don't make that much. Shelby and I together don't even make uh, six figures, which is rough for this area. You know, you make do with what you got. But it was kind of quite funny watching all the housewives panic and not know what to do when they couldn't get pre-cut chicken breasts. Um, hell, half of them didn't even know what to do with chicken thighs. Now, me and the people who are working Instacart, uh, which are generally more ethnic, um, were very excited when we saw chicken thighs. We were like, hella, 
Like, you couldn't find chicken thighs before the pandemic, which is nice. Chicken thighs have better flavor. They may not be healthier. It's worth the trade off, I promise you that. Do you want to actually taste your chicken? Get chicken thighs. So that's why we're making chicken parm out of thighs tonight. Um, like I said, if you're like doing it with breasts, you're probably going to either have to like roll them or flatten them or butterfly them. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to bake this half a chicken and shoot it pretty good. Um, but yeah, these are good to go. I'm just going to get the baby pan out, set the oven, and we're just going to bake them. I'm going to do 400. I'm going to 400. Chicken thighs are so good. Get the pressure out. Have a bait. Yeah, this outfit's super cute. I love this. Oh yeah, I um I have a couple barbecue sauces and a couple of spices. We're gonna we're gonna rub onto this and just let it bake, which I think should come out really nice. I'm absolutely gonna have to sanitize the kitchen now because it's like fucking covered in kitchen or chicken juice central. All right, stop. So, let me push this forward. I'm gonna get the baking pan out. Um. We'll call, up, we'll call baby pan first. I've been set for 400, so my guess would be about like maybe 20 minutes. I generally, just because I've cooked chicken thighs like this so many goddamn times, um, I'm very familiar. You just kind of look at it. Is it still pink? No, it's not done. Is it white and starting to turn golden brown? Yeah, it's done. So, pretty simple. It's just going to go on here. going to lay them right out, nice and flat. Quote unquote skin side down. Again, pretty simple. I'm gonna try and wipe that down. I know there's shit on it. I don't have to actually wash it. Sanitize it, but it should be. Oh, I just don't want to have like set that down and shit. Oh, Excellent. So seasoning for this, very simple. It is a chicken parm. We're gonna go with our usual. Oh. Yeah, it's it's a lot of book reading, and while it makes it more difficult, it definitely rewards you for eating more, and it's going to make it so you can't get to the end as fast as you can. Um, I have some Italian seed thing. This is just creaming. Basil, oregano, probably some parsley. That's it. That's all you need to do. Very simple. We'll wait until that's up. We're good to go. Our rice is done. Good vacuum seal there. Going to, uh, yeah, there it is. Rinse this off quick. By rinse, I mean actually scrub, because it's dirty. Wash down the old rice spoon. Right, give this a little stir here. Now, there's not a lot of rice, but I'm not going to need a lot of rice. Uh, that's kind of the kind of the goal here. What you want is a nice little clumpy rice. Um, so yeah, we'll go in this bowl here. I don't look as this bowl is just plastic, so it's a bit stinky. I was like, oh my god, is this... No, I washed it yesterday. About the same question. So, I have some rice here. Scooping her hot. That's out of rice. Kooka. As Tonk and Miller would say. Yeah, pretty simple. Pretty easy. It's fucking white rice. What I am going to do, however, is I do have a... That would have been an atrocity. Got some rice fit. Where it is currently. Rice one. You know, 
what? I'm, I'm about to give up because I don't care. Okay. What I do have instead is a little bit of meat. Just a little bit. Don't go crazy with this. Add a little sweetness to the rice and it's going to help it. Just a couple of drops there. Nothing crazy. Let's do it. Right. So that's taken care of. That can be turned off. Next, we wait for the oven. Um, I think while we're at it, I'm gonna go and grab some. Get this all seasoned up and toss them both in the oven. Um, it's the same standard as what's going on, dude. Oh yeah. For those, uh, I'll, I'll break these out. So, the two knives that I brought home from Japan. We have a standard, nice vegetable chopper. Plate. Very, very nice. Um, raw carbon on the outside and on the edge. Middle, like, cutting area. Very nice, very traditional, very used. Cuts through vegetables like nobody's business. You won't be seeing that one tonight. I have used it already. It's really good. This is the piece of resistance. A raw carbon edge. It's already. Here we go. Just a little. In some use. Um, but this is from. Get the name. Oh, Aritsuka is one of the biggest most textures in the as my stamped on it. Well, not stamped. Uh, this is a standard all-purpose knife. Got a 12 degree edge. Uh, raw carbon steel. Certainly. Very thick at the edge, but very fucking sharp. Terrifyingly sharp. Like, Sharp knives are better because you're gonna cut through whatever you're cutting, but it's still a little bit of a little bit of nervousness when you're working with something on that degree of sharpness. Because it's not like, oops, I cut myself. It's an oops, I removed part of my finger. I need to go to the hospital. Alright, that should be almost done. I'm gonna get the second tray up. And then I gotta get some seasonings and sauces out. Well, uh, it's like, uh, it's like Dungeons and Dragons, people. Seasonings and sauces. You'll never know what you'll find, what combinations work really well. Um, which was really a, a, a key component of some of the stuff, food-wise, I enjoyed in Japan. Um, like, I had a beef stew omelet, which sounds questionable. Why would you put beef stew with an omelet? It doesn't quite makes sense. But uh, in actuality, it does. And it was very fucking good. Um, so I have this. I'm going to save that to make it. Okay, so I have the bird out. I don't really... I guess I could crack it open. It'll be a pull and peel, baby. Go pull and peel special. Something that is omelet, it sounds questionable. You buy a knife sharpener, go to this. <laughs> I actually have, if anyone's familiar with this, is I have like a sharpener uh, that is could be kitchen. Makes life easy. Um, yeah, it sounds really questionable, Trad. Really good. Very, very good. Um, Shelby also had a uh a bacon cheese omelet. Bacon in Japan is more like kind of ham. How we have it, like sliced ham. Um, we had that with a curry, which sounds really, again, strange, but was absurdly good. Um, Japan also has a love for mustard, various type. And I had one with that ham katsu. No, not pork katsu, not pork tenderloin. I'm talking like thick cut American style, like for Thanksgiving ham that was breaded. 
Very, very good. Uh, very tank, very tart. Yeah, dude, there's, it, it's so wild. So, so wild. Your pants have your car keys, mood. All right, so seasoning this entire bird, we're gonna go with adobo. Uh, I'm gonna go like kind of a, an Asian barbecue style type sauce. And yes, as important, you must fill the hole with seasoning as it cooks on the inside and outside. Now, with the skin still attached, I would highly recommend a... How highly I recommend. It tends to work for me is a good bit of salt. You want some salt on the outside of the skin? I'm really gonna rub it in there. That should help get it nice and crispy like the skin that everyone wants, okay? Salt's gonna get in there and act as a desiccant. It's gonna remove the moisture, wick it out, and obviously, want crispy skin. You can't get that when it's wet. What other fun things do I have? I have some Japanese seven spice, AKA Shichimi Togarashi. Um, this is a mix of peppers and earthy spices, sesame seeds. I believe there's a little bit of bonito flake in there too. Um, yeah, I'm gonna give that the old uh, what else do I have? I didn't actually bring back too many. Surprisingly. I have adobo spices. Listen, I'm the white friend that people come to my house and they have to bring tough, not the other way around. Firm believer. This entire card back here, which is right about butt cheek height. Is three tiers of things and spices. Um, I am not. <laughs> listen, we we don't we don't fucking wait for you. A little bit of mirin on this again. Sugar is going to help crisp it up. It'll also help brown it up a little bit. Also going to help some. Uh, I am going to take that tail piece and probably wrap it up and toss it in the fridge. And like I said, I'm going to do it down tomorrow. Um, I picked up from my local grocery uh, one vicious Carolina gold bar. But they just recently came out with a quote unquote Asian. Because they have ginger, lemon, and some high chili. So it's a tomato puree, cane sugar, tamari sauce, tamari's good, uh, vinegar, ginger puree, cornstarch, molasses, jalapeno, lemon juice, onion powder, garlic powder. Okay, well, let's see how this is. If it's not that great, I'll make my own sauce. My main adobo and salt. Yeah, to be honest, I'm one of those people, like, I found adobo, God, probably like 10, 10 years ago. And I fell in love with it. It goes on pretty much all of my proteins. Give this, give this here. Yeah, the tomato's pretty bright in this, but I'm hoping as it heats down, it should be pretty okay. So, I <laughs> pretty close this and give this a shake because she's a bit chunky. That's okay. Mainly, I don't want to like absolutely coat this, but I do want to get a little bit on here so it can kind of work its way around. All right, well, that farted out, okay? That should be pretty okay. So that's just basically gonna work its way. Get nice and crispy. I do not feel the need to like rub it or coat it. It'll be fine. That sauce is good as a barbecue sauce with the tomato coming in. Kind of tastes like if someone was like, hey, I'm gonna make a barbecue sauce out of this ketchup. So, I need to do something. Um, you know what? Ponzi. Oh, what's up, Flip? How you doing, Jeff? A little bit of Ponzu. This is a soy with uh, some yeast. Lever. Um, if anyone can find me you concentrate, I haven't looked, but if it exists, let me know. Um, 
the Lawson Lawson has a lemon nuggets. It sounds like it'd be really real, but it is absurdly good. Like a lemon pepper chip, but with more flavor minus the Yeah, there's, um, if you're familiar with the Pepper Palace, uh, they make an incredible, they have an incredible selection of barbecues. All right, so this is gonna go in, then we're gonna slice up some sushi. That is sounding great. Baby tray can go in here. I'm gonna check on these in like 15 minutes. Um, and to be honest, that should really be all we need. For a parm, normally I'll like heat up some sauce on the stove, but I really have no, no desire tonight, so we'll just put the sauce on cold and it'll be all right. Right. Now, all this bullshit. I'm going to clean this cutting board. Deal with it. This out of the way. Right. So, a reminder, even though I am sometimes not the best at it, you want to avoid cross-contamination. Like, there was raw chicken on this. I'm about to put raw fish on this. Just don't risk it. Salmonella sucks. So, nice hot soapy water. Give it a good scrub. There we go. Clean. Simple and easy enough. The menu we're working on a we broke down and took the breasts off of and kind of broke out a chicken um i made chicken thighs for chicken farm which are going in the now um and we have some white rice already rice i had this nice excellent stuff have this rice here so what I'm gonna do is just kind of form it I'm not the best at making rice okay so this shit ain't forming it might be me it may have sat for a little bit it may not have sat long enough it might need vinegar or some urine but there we go not pretty but will it service yes it will yeah, one of the best barbecue sauces I've had is from the Pepper Palace. It was a uh, it was a key lime barbecue, but it wasn't like absurdly like limey. But it was just like it had that nice citrus touch with the barbecue sauce. Like it just works so well. This rice might be a little bit too. Let me want my hand. Yep, that's what it was. My hands were just fucking dry. Again, a little bit of vinegar probably would have helped with this. So, again, it's not the prettiest. But, will it do? Yeah, absolutely. Besides, everyone just wants to see the new knives anyway. Watch me cut, cut fish. Woo! just some king salmon it is uh about forty dollars a pound i have about a third whatever a third of a pound and it is in great shape beautiful nicely trimmed uh no real fat on it but here we go okay right, i'll save that later and give it a home right so while theoretically this is not what you should be placing sushi with you should be using a 
slicing knife. However, this knife is very sharp. An angle, one stroke. Yeah, pretty simple. You don't want to be hacking through your raw fish. But let's give it a Very good. It's very firm. Very fishy. Good salmon. Right. So what I do is I try and get in at an angle, start at the tip, knife do the work, bam. You want to cut it through in one slice. And simple. Nice and smooth. Train sushi chef? No, absolutely not. Or if there's someone that is, they're screaming at me. Wrong knife, use the wrong technique. But hey, you're fucking that shit either. But nice and smooth. Let the knife do the not like <laughs> It's a sharp knife. If you're having to put pressure through your cut, knife is not sharp enough, and chances are you're probably gonna end up just tearing the shit out of it. But there we go. Very simple. Very easy. Very clean. Take a picture of it. Beautiful. I'm one of those people that also firmly does not believe in, in soy. Bobby, my sushi. Not necessary. Alright, so take zoom in, take a scroll. Plates. Very simple, very easy. A lot of work. Rice, but So, oh, any questions so far? Give you all the Discord, YouTube, stream wish lists as well while I'm over here. If you don't have Mirin, another trick you could do is like a little bit of water and some. Yeah, nice form. Very much. Showcases the flavor and the texture of the fish. Spices are soft. Fish are Pretty new. I mean, I guess I have the question. Do we want to do Valheim? Do we want to do golf? Who's around for what? I wait to knock out this chicken. This thing cuts pretty paper thin. Good enough to make a translucent. Hmm. Believe it or not, the cat boy loves raw fish. Because the hardens. is also leaning against the wall when I, I have to remember to pull towards me and not get lazy with it. Being in fucking... Nice. 
question. What games are we? I don't know. I've got months. That'll come out. It all comes out. Yeah, we're really good. We're very good. We've got five minutes left on the second fives. It probably won't be done, but we'll probably be close enough. Not my grab. Here we have the honor. There it is. Five. So. Definitely want to see the chicken thighs hitting about 160 when they're done. Okay, so I might throw the on top of them. They're only like 145, 55. It's going to take a couple minutes to melt the cheese, and by that time, the temp internally will not. Very simple, very easy. But yes, do not undercook your chicken. Beef, turkey, uh, fish. Yeah, I, I don't fuck with undercooked pork or under. Karen can keep her uh, fucking her chicken breast. Tastes like shit. It's not just balls on. Um, yeah. Alexa, set tea kettle to 170 degrees. It was either in Ginza or Asakura. Okay, 
I will check the noise gate. Oh, part of it is probably because there's a large glass sitting in front of it. Is this any better? I assume this will probably be better. Yeah. Okay, yeah, let me tr let me trim that. That's weird. Adjust that really quick. Okay, so that should probably be better. I lowered the um, I lowered the open threshold by about seven dB. So, some very nice, fancy green tea, some squishy, and it should probably be able to pick up from talking away. Beautiful. Ah, some nice green tea. Then we'll cheese it up. I was so spoiled with tea and coffee. Bingo, how are you? Good to see you tonight. I don't know why I threw this out. Thankfully, it's still sitting on the top. Probably just box this up for Shelby. I need to get our cheese ready. Gonna go off. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna slide this into the old chicken. All right, chicken titty is still at internally 60 degrees. So that shit ain't it. This chicken thigh is actually good. It's beyond good. Surprising me, it's probably because they're so thin. So, I'm gonna take these out here. Make sure to pinch any wires in there. That's still gonna need quite some time. So, what I'm gonna do here is I have some mozzarella cheese, and well, that's gonna go on there. Pretty simple. This shouldn't be like a surprise to anyone how to how melt cheese on chicken in oven. Realistically, you could use the broiler, but because I have something else cooking, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go into the exact science of that. I'm just gonna take a nice little uh, hunk of mozzarella here, jam that in the crevasse, as they would say. You can see that on the over-the-top cam here to the left. And basically, all I want to do is just get this melty and bubble. Not that not that difficult. This should just be pretty delicious. The whole chicken, nothing's been processed on it. Just you know. American poultry in its questionable instances. Uh, I will vacuum seal this cheese after I eat it to make sure you always have to check your mozzarella cheese to make sure it's not been poisoned. Okay. It's pretty okay. Don't think anyone did anything nefarious with it. Just have to make sure though. Very hands off cooking today. Yeah, this is, listen, this is a pretty straightforward endeavor. There is no need to go like above and beyond the call of, got my eagle eyes on.
have some dribbles there. Um, I should have some. That's home, Jack. There! Vacuum sealed Parmesan cheese. And have some leftover uh, Parmesan Romano tomato sauce. Again, very simple. Very simple and easy. There's a time and place to be extravagant. This is not it. But there we go. That's that's it. You just put tomato sauce on fucking chicken. And I'll tell you right now, if you're using uh, like sprinkle Parmesan cheese, stop. Shit's awful. Just stop. Stop it. Get some help. Get real cheese. It's worth it. It's more more. Uh, it's more cost productive. It tastes better. I gotta trim it. My uh, vacuum seal didn't hold there, so we got a few stragglers. I'm not one of those people, especially with cheese. It's like, oh, this cheese is moldy here. Like the shitty processed cheese, yeah, just fucking throw it out. Good stuff, no, just for it. Cheese is literally mold anyway. Shitty business here. Made a wide berth around where it was getting a little funky Colmadina. So, microplaner, cheese grater, you can find them. They're really inexpensive. That bitch on there. Now I sauced it up pretty nice and around the edges, that's okay. I don't care if the sauce kind of caramelizes a little bit or bakes into it. That's kind of the point. You just want like chicken with cheese, with the uh, tomato sauce, you can just make that. I want it to kind of bake in, kind of coat it, help make like a little crust. Plus, this, the, the other thing is this is a roasting chicken that I wrote down. It's not just like a generic whole chicken. Um, a roasting chicken is going to be more focused on big breasts and like that's it. Kind of like, kind of like your grandfather. Uh, you know, got big breasts. But anyway, this is going to go back in there. I forgot that this was also like oven temperatures. So it's kind of really hot on my bare hands. But, kitchen hands. I'm gonna turn the timer down on this to about four minutes. That should really be all it needs to kind of melt and coagulate. It should be fine. And we'll keep an eye on the cooking, uh, the roasting chicken. Uh, the question is, do I want to make Shelby some of her own? She probably won't eat it. Um, so I guess the next thing we can start focusing on really is clean up. Scones? Oh, dude, I have so many good scones. Something started eating it before I did. It's, dude, it's mold on cheese. It's like, especially with hardened cheeses, like, it's not gonna fucking infect its way through. Hmm. Did you get a chance to try any of that tea at MPT? The Rio Goku I got you was absurdly highly recommended. It was <laughs> the person at the at the store was like, "This very nice, but like a treat." Oh, okay, okay. Ugh. I did grab um, the the stuff from Team Lab. I had to grab myself one of those too. Not yet. Well, the stuff from Hippodo is absurdly good. I'm pretty, I think I got you the Rio Goku from Hippodo. Oh. I'm gonna turn this fan on. It's getting a little bit warm in here, even though I don't really turn on.
Yep. Yeah, exactly. That's the tough part. It's like paying attention. That's why I have the smart TV for my very dumb ass. Actually, let me text Shelby. Myself for it later. Yes, that was a good guess. About four minutes. And I gotta vacuum seal that up. I might toss it in the freezer and then I can just stock it up. Make some soup whenever Shelby's ready. Yo, so, what up, youngest what is? I don't know if Shelby's gonna get back to me, but worst case scenario, I can just Turn this little bit of rice into like uh, yeah. omelet rice tomorrow with some salmon or something. Yeah, I can pull a, what, what is it you like, MPT? Salmon and lox with capers omelet. Yeah, here we go. That is um, broken down chicken in a chicken farm. Pretty simple. I'm gonna recenter this fucking mess. And I'm just gonna let it go. There's, I'll be surprised at the internal temp of that's like over a hundred. Um, basically, I'm gonna cook it until the breast is done, um, cause that's the beefiest part of it. Yeah, the internals on the tits are still 90, 95. So it's got another 70 degrees to go. That's honestly going to take at least another 20 minutes, but that's about right. Like roasting a whole chicken at like 400, about 40, 45 minute job. We'll toss 15 on the timer there. Box monster onions, yeah. Capers are definitely not. I love capers, to be honest. Not, not like in everything, they're definitely not in everyday occurrence, but capers, as you mentioned, are very tart. They're, uh, they're a good accent, they're very bold. Especially with, with broad flavors, like especially onions. Onions, as you cook them down, tend to be sweet. Capers have a little bit of sour tang. Hey, right, let me grab a plate, get into it. And it should be good. Chicken par, chicken thigh par. Not fried. And I'm also one of those people I really don't like frying my chicken par. Um, considering I'm already slathering it with all sorts of shit, um, I'd rather just kind of enjoy it for what it is. Um, yeah. Round. So it's a little 
away. There will be lots of cleaning going on. Lots, lots of sanitizing. Right there, cool. Bites. I have no interest in shitting. Yo, have a great night, Overkill. Thanks for swinging by. Fuck! Rianne, are you still here? I completely forgot about the bean boozle. We'll do that. Because it's from a roasting chicken, the thighs have a nice coloration. Which is dark meat. It's juicy, delicious, and parm. Surprising nobody. I didn't hammer it because I was being lazy. I didn't feel like spraying even more chicken juice all over the entire kitchen. Um, or ruining my fucking rolling pin which I use for other things, and I hate fucking sanitizing it. So, the texture isn't super uniform, but it's good. Very soft and buttery where it's not hacked up. But it's, it's fucking chicken parm. It's great. Tastes great. Tastes great. Less filling. Chicken parm. Truly great socks. Yes. Listen, it's pride. You gotta go all out. You only go one month a year. Speaking of prides and feet, it's pen. Look, penis leg. <laughs> Isn't bedtime for you? Yeah, I don't know if you've seen this skirt, by the way, but it is fabulous. Love it. Asymmetrical AF. Like a real-life VTuber. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll finish that, and I guess we can start breaking stuff down. If no one has any questions, Shelby hasn't hit me back about the sushi. I can just get up and make it. Chances are she'll just want the hunk of raw fish. Yeah, it's um, it's it's very me, very very me. The lighting right. Um, you'll see them. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's all I got for right now, I guess. Uh, we'll finish that and start breaking down. Uh, are we Valheiming? Are we golfing? What is the mood? This is the loot fisk. No, dog, you didn't fucking pay me for that shit. Yeah, this is from a shop called Audrey. Um, 
towards the front end of uh, Akinashio Street. So right off of the Harajuku uh, train stop. This is the shirt is too. This was like a collaboration. I forget who the one artist is, but the other one was with um, Ink Drop. If anyone remembers, like there was that like temporary tattoo company. Like you'd basically print out your tattoo, and it was like temporary for like two or three weeks. I remember it being the rage like a couple of years ago. And then it kind of disappeared. Anyway, it's really popular in Japan because it's just considered a fashion accessory as opposed to an actual tattoo. Um, so they've seen incredible success over there. Um, but they did a um, collaboration with, like, some artists. It's really cool. There's, uh, like, teeth and tentacles. It's great. Oh, good boy. I've never made hummus. I've not made hummus in a hot minute, but... I will recommend, if you can't find good tahini paste, grind your own sesame seeds. It makes all the difference in the world. God, that was some great green tea. you got listen when it gets hot my clothes come off i will s gladly sit in front of the air conditioning spread leg fucking i got listen i got there's it's, it's going on in there so no it's gotta it's gotta be properly climate controlled and so i'm wearing a skirt because you know standing next to a 400 plus degree oven for 40 minutes is really great in pants when there's no air movement, the back corner of the apartment is already warm. You're fucking around. Uh. <laughs> right. So, what are we doing? We golfing, we valheiming, who's around, who's active. Seth, I think you can drop a ping for multiplayer in Discord and see kind of who wants what, when, where. Um, so I definitely want to get to Seven Days to Die by, like, midnight. Preferably. So that's going to fit well for us East Coast DGens as well as the West Coast. Oh, DR dropping five subs. To our boy Snester Day, our girl Demon, our girl Flutter, Leo, and our big gay boyfriend, Grim. He's not my boy. No, super appreciated. Yeah, no worries. We can always get you caught up to speed. And the good thing is the alpha actually comes out on Monday. So, like, we don't have to do this, you know, alpha code and beta keys. By Monday, everyone will be on the same thing. Yeah, but super appreciated in the PR. Okay, so I think what we're going to do is let's just start getting everything cleaned up. Um, because I have a lot of stuff that I'm going to plan on reusing, we're going to get out the vacuum sealer. Um, oh, one other cool thing. I don't know if anyone remembers the saga of Playbots. But, check this out. We now have this. Available for cooking streams. That is a burner. Butane powered camping stove. So we can actually watch stuff over an open place. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no worries. No worries, MPT. There's a 
there's a there's a, a few hidden sub alerts, but yeah, the Quiznos thing is a tremendous gem from way back. Either way, very excited we have that in the arsenal. And if I ever want to go camping, it could be worse though. Dr. We um, I had someone drop like a hundred gift subs. Actually, the thing was like two hundred in one night. It was literally like an hour and a half of me having to listen to the Quiznos pepper bar. I mean, off like charitable, yes. Incredibly hilarious, yes. After the first 30 minutes though, I was starting to get burned out of it. <laughs> so I don't have a hot pot, but Larry was generous enough to grab a wok, which made an appearance earlier today. But a very nice very sturdy, textured, and uh, I believe the handle detaches. Well, yeah, the handle detaches. I scrubbed the shit out of this. Why is there still schmutz in it? But yeah, it's burned in a little bit. Well, not burned in, seasoned. You know the term. Um, but yeah, that food's really good. I used that to make uh, the pork belly fried rice earlier this week, and it was just fucking tremendous. Yo, welcome back, Im. Um, did you get the ping about the beta key? So if you downloaded the alpha yesterday, do not let it update. Just put in the new beta key, and it should not want to update. Um, but... A white people walk. <laughs> That's a good one. Best kebab ever. I, um, no, that's, that's hammered, hammered, um, no, it's, it's, it's not cast iron, no. You don't do cast iron with wok, you just do raw fucking, raw steel. Because with the amount of heat and, like, loose flame, you just, you don't want that shit, like, exposed to like non-stick surfaces and cast iron meh when it comes to like that stuff so i just use like raw steel and then just break it in with oil get out of this vacuum seat Needed no update, you're ready to complain. Perfect. Um, yeah, you missed quite a bit, Inf. Like, it got really fucking weird. Uh, there's been three, um... So, since the race started, there's been, like, almost three hours of safety cars. Um, right when we got back, or right when we left for groceries, it started to rain. And I mean fucking rain, dude. Um, it was messy in the best of scenarios. Um, Corvette got fucked on one of the safety cars, uh, which led to a lengthening of the safety car to try and get everyone back where they technically belonged. It was a disaster. Um, the Kobayashi and, like, the, the number eight Toyota, like, the, the number one Toyota, uh, got retired from the race because someone slammed into the back of it and over the top. Um, one of the, one of the LMP2 cars brushed the outside of the Porsche curves and then smashed into the other side of it and just basically dis disassembled the entire car across the back straight. Not back street, but the, the exit of the Porsche curves. It's pretty gnarly. Um, one of the AF Corsa Ferraris had an off. Um, I'm trying to think. It's 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 been it's been wild. Yeah, like so. I know like the first hour of the race was a little bit under safety car for whatever reason. Um, and then there was, like, they, they pulled out a full course safety, and honestly, it took them an hour to 
between cleaning up the the resultant wreck of the um, the AF Corsa, or I'm sorry, the Toyota getting like literally uh, snowplowed, um, and then trying to get the the lead lap situ like the lapping situation sorted. It was like an hour plus safety car. But yeah, it's been it's been honestly weird. I was talking with Pendulum about it, and it's like at first like I know I know nighttime gets a little sketchy at Le Mans. It always does. But I don't know like if there's something with the track or the tires going on, but it is it the track looks absurdly slippy. Like I don't know if it's because the rain and it's already kind of cold. Plus, washing the rubber off the track. Maybe it's just like a fresh issue, but either way, like it, uh, it's, it's, it's not been this crazy in years. Hey, yo, Poppy, what's going on? Oh, Rianne, I had your, um, I had your Bean Boozle. It was, um, Tutti Fruity or Stinky Sock, and I think it was, I don't know. <laughs> Who the fuck stormed there? I stormed this. Yeah, what's going on, Poppy? Good to see you. We're just wrapping up. Basically, this was just a showcase for my new knives and generalized kitchen skills. I have a half a chicken still in the oven, um, but that's gonna be pretty good. So I'm just sealing everything up. I have the cutest shirt of all time. What, uh, how's, how's Diablo 4 treating you? I've just stayed away from it because fucking bad taste in my mouth from Blizzard, but listen, I ain't here to criticize people. Everybody's got to make a living. Ah, uh, you're back on a diet? What, uh, what are the, if you want to talk about it, what are the restrictions? I can probably help you out with some. For me, like, I'm never really on a diet. There's just, like, a way I prefer to eat. Um, and it's it's honestly been tough transitioning back from just eating whatever the fuck I want in Japan to going back onto, like, my normal diet. Yeah, food's really good. Tonight is a, um, just literally half of a chicken that's baking away. Um, with, like, some Asian-style barbecue. And uh, we just made some very simple sushi with some raw salmon and uh, some white rice. Oh yeah, the chicken butt. I gotta, I gotta seal up the chicken butt. I'm gonna use that to uh, make like a chicken soup or chicken stock for later. I could, I could hit it with some. But I have some bonito flake fresh from Japan. Um, I have some pretty good kelp, and I do have some really good. Um, I brought back some salt from Hokkaido, um, so I could probably make like a bastardized Shio ramen broth if I tried my hand at it. Pre-diabetic? Okay, yeah. So basically you're staying away from sugars and grains, I assume. Anything that's going to put a strain on your pancreas. I was gonna say if you I, I assume you know Radia. I don't know how many how many spoons she has currently, but I know she's been having some pancreas troubles. Um, so I know her diet's been a little bit focused on not stressing her pancreas out, so she might also have some tips for you. For now, that's understandable. I know pancreas uh, Sometimes they want you to stay away from red meat, too. Just red meat's tough to process on the body for the most part. That's all right. I fucking love chicken. I love fish. You, uh, you know what? I'm just going to throw this chicken butt in the freezer. Uh, do we have any, any inclination of uh, what we're doing community-wise tonight, Seth? Did anyone get back? Oh, my weekly steal of the week uh, from our local Wegmans. Let me make sure the address isn't on it. 
some Greek turkey patties. Very nice. For a total of three and a half dollars. Get them bad boys blasted up tomorrow. It's gonna be like a nice lunch. Um, I think that's really all I need to put away, realistically. I don't need to vacuum seal anything else. My ass. T, Larry, Quinn, and Kevin. So yeah, probably golf. Let's just let's just golf it. Yeah. We can uh we can do we can we'll, we'll bump Alheim the next week. We can do that on Saturday and seven days to die on Friday or something like that. I'm okay with I'm okay with like an hour and a half, two hours golf. Ah, all right. So as we wrap it up, any questions, any concerns, any commentary? Ah. Oh yeah, I should probably wash them. Huh? <laughs> Take care of that. Oh yeah, golf works for me. You know me. I'm very so very in control of my stream. I care so much. I'm gonna use that smoker on this salmon, I think, tomorrow. Shelby doesn't have anything she wants to do with it. But yeah, it's good to see you, brother. Sorry I've just been like, I don't know what it is. I've just been absurdly busy. But at the same time, like, literally exhausted. Like, I've barely been able to stay awake through a full work day. And I think part of that's just, like, the come down of I was in somewhere I was so excited to be for, like, two weeks, and then coming back here and realizing I have to work again is just like, bro, that shit sucks so much. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of getting back in the paint. I'm very lucky that I came back with a, like almost nothing on my plate because I pushed everything out while I was like, in the rush to get out to Japan. Um, and then our department head is on vacation. My boss is on vacation. Yeah, something like that. Uh, dude, Japan was fucking so dope. It's literally just clothes, uh, really cool records. Um, I found the cloud in a dress figurine. Um, I got cooking knives, really nice knives. We did those. I did end up finding the guitar I was looking for, but the person I had looking for it didn't find it until I was back home, which takes one half a dozen of the other. doesn't really bother me. Um, just food. Like, to be honest, all of our money was spent on cute clothes and food. Like, I have so many cute outfits for Femboy Friday. It's absurdly cool. Um, if you're thinking about going, go. I will gladly share my itinerary, which is full of, uh, like, all the neighborhoods that we visited, like, nicely grouped together. You can go to the tallest building in Tokyo. You can have coffee at the place that inspired LeBlanc for five. There's a really cute aquarium. You can go to the Ghibli Museum. It was, it was just quite wonderful. The food, the food is so fucking good. I was, I was talking about it earlier. Like one of the things that it really inspired me with is creativity. There's so much more creativity. My, my partner had a basically a ham egg and cheese omelet with curry and it was delicious I had a I had an omelet with beef stew again doesn't sound like it would be great but just awesome Boston had a um, ooh, chickens almost done we're up to 120 so another 10 I to spin it it's not cooking anything. Um, Lawson had a lemon yuzu chicken which Sounds like it would be, you know, that eh, maybe questionable, but it was like sweet and tangy, just like absurdly good. So the thing for me is it really kind of opened up my ability again, even as a almost 33 year old adult to play with food and not like smash it up, throw it around, but learning about how to just take risks, um, try something different. 
Um, it also really got me back into coffee. I was not a coffee fan, but man, coffee's good. So for me, I think, well, yes, I'm fucking exhausted. Walked something on the course of 80 miles in two weeks. So it's a lot of exercise for someone who doesn't really leave the house and do exercise, but like still, that's a lot. Um, I, my soul is recharged. I think my brain is recharged, but physically I'm just kind of recovering still. Like there's a lot of physical exertion. Um, and I think for me, the, the very interesting part of some of it was I, um, I'm one of those people where uh, I don't want to be like, oh, I'm so unfortunate and poor. Well, it's me type of deal. Cause I fucking hate pity. To be honest, I hate platitudes. I'd rather have someone be like, yeah, bro, that's happened to me and that shit sucks. Um, but like everything just went better than expected. Like we got to do everything we planned to do and more. And I'm usually like not that fortunate. Like something always has to go wrong. And like realistically, the only thing that like kind of went wrong is uh, Shelby lost her JR pass and had to like just buy a ticket for the Shinkansen. It was it was a monetary, mix, but like it wasn't like the end of it all. Yeah, like that's the thing. Just take that bitch up. Like we uh we went out in the fucking in the rain. Like yeah, that was another thing. We had rain for like three days and it just literally didn't stop us. And thankfully it wasn't. The only time it was super heavy is we were right on the coast at the Gundam factory in Yokohama, so we're like right on the water, and we're just we're just getting absolutely fucking drenched. But like it didn't matter, dude. I'm in Japan checking out a giant moving fucking robot. I'll, we'll take the train home. It's gonna be warm in the in the tunnels anyway. I don't even think we went home right away, but they gave everybody ponchos anyway, so for the most part we were dry anyway. Um, umbrellas are everywhere in super. Yeah, dude, it was, it's, it's super sick. Um, yeah, like, just everything timing-wise was great. I got to see Deer and Grey at Haneda for, I don't know, the first time seeing, seeing a concert in Japan, and it's one of the bands I've probably followed the longest in my life. Like, it just kind of worked out. The, there's a record I've been hunting for for years, and it just so happened that this month, our records decided they were going to do like a repressing of the record and be able to snag that and an original copy just i don't know it, it like so many things went the correct direction and like kind of our way i almost refuse to believe that it happened because i'm generally not that fortunate when it comes to luck will do go ahead do your thing We'll catch up later. You know me. My DMs are always open. I will respond. But I think we're good. Everyone uh, everyone, good to, like, go? Ready for, um... Ready for golf? Because I'm, I'm pretty good. But for real, this skirt is so fucking cute and comfy. I love it. Um, I remember it, that was honestly like the store that I bought this from was like one of the only places where I got like strange looks. Like the girl who was ringing me up was like, for you? And I was like, yeah, for me. She's like, mm. But a lot of the other clothing stores we went to, like there were like men running the shop and they're like, Oh, is this for you? Like a crop top and like short shorts. I'm like, yeah, it's for me. Fucking cool. Yeah, dude. Get it? I would love to get design work and work for a company like ACDC Rag or something. They are multinational. I just don't think they think about expanding to the US. All right. So anyway, I will just kind of leave this here. I think we're good. I'll wrap that up. But, all right, yeah, let's make a cup of tea and then we'll call it. So this will be your like two, three minute warning for golf. 
get in the voice chat, and uh, we'll, we'll swing it up. That is perfect. Yo, what's up, Saru? Um, nah, they're, to be honest, like, it's, it's really not that bad in Japan. Like, listen, I only spent two weeks there, and I'm not gonna argue with, like, neckbeards on the internet over the truths and assumptions of what Japanese society is like, because, you know, I only have so many hours in the day and only so many cares in the world. Um, but I, Japan is a very traditional society. Um, they have traditional values. This needs just literally like two, three more minutes. Um, but they did just defend the, the legality of same-sex marriage. I think they're trying, they're starting to move forward, but Japan as itself traditionally does have a lot of issues. They're regrettably xenophobic, um, but they love tourists. They love tourists, they love tourist money, but they don't like it when you move there. Um, but no, everyone was like really cool with me being who I am. Like, but like, that's the thing. Like I wasn't going to like super fancy Cartier stores and like just browsing around knowing full well I'm not buying shit. We spent a lot of time in like the Harajuku area where there is that kind of visual K or alternative fashion style where gender ambiguity is a thing and non-gender conforming clothes or genderless clothing is, is, is more on par and on break. So, you know, I, I don't want to say I didn't go where I didn't belong, but at the same time, I kind of knew where I wanted to be in. But yeah, I, um, I used to stream with a camera all the time, Saru. Um, it's just, it got really, like the way we have things set up here, um, like if I want to stream late into the night, that means my partner has to go to bed wearing clothes, which is really uncomfortable. Um, and like, if it gets really hot in my corner, like I still have to like wear clothes when I stream, so I don't like that. Um, yeah. It is in the same place where I put it last night. Um, so what that should do is it'll either like re-update again or get rid of the need to update, depending on if you force the game to update or not. There is one thing I need to do. I need to get some water into this, otherwise the uh, rice is gonna stick to the bottom of it. But yeah, I'm gonna make this tea and this, honestly, this should be done in two minutes. I am making a great time. That's still pressure locking, that's cute. But yeah, I've been, I've been streaming for like six or seven years now and I decided to use a virtual avatar, um, what was that like three or four years ago? Um, but I'm one of those like, oh, I'm not here average VTuber, but I mean, my content isn't generally like just chatting streams. It's mainly RPGs, speedruns, and community gaming. I'm gonna grab the dishwasher and then we'll start breaking down. Also green tea chocolate from Ipodo. I forget where I got this. This was uh, out of the where I get like 
it's always like the same couple of trolls like oh wow there are like boy anime streamers now it's like bro they were always boys they just gave up using the voice mode hey bro sad ass sad ass neckbeard colony is neckbeard an offensive term can we make it an offensive term Corn rice and chicken? Yeah! That should be fine. That's a great combo. If you, uh, if the chicken is shredded, just wrap that bitch up in a tortilla with some lettuce. That's, that's, that's a free burrito right there. Alright, this chicken should be done. I'm just gonna pull it out. Internal temps are gonna be right at, like, 165. And the other thing, because it's so damn hot, like me to continue to cook, and this smells really good. Look at that. Arr! Cool. So, that'll be great snacks. Worst case scenario, I can shred that up tomorrow morning, make some nice little chicken omelets. Carice, there's like tons of options. I'm gonna wrap up this chicken farm for my partner. I love the good chicken farm. I love the farm. And uh, I think that's it. So, hey, any questions, any concerns? I'm gonna wrap this up and get it ready to go. Oh no, that happens more often. Than like, and don't get me wrong, like, I still get hate. People are like, what do you mean you're a femboy? You sound like a man. Like, you got, like, the foot part in that sentence? Like, am I supposed to be, like, trans? Like, I, I, don't, I, I don't know what your expectations are. Someone came in last night trolling, asking if it was, like, a mental illness. And they got banned because they're not really funny. They thought they were trying to be funny and edgy, but, like, fucking it's about as funny as shitting your pants, I guess. I don't know. I think it's I think it's silly and trying to put genders and labels on people is kind of a waste. Not really. Let people be. Pretty simple. Right. Rice and corn in the bowl, a new bourbon top, dollop of butter on the rice. Yep, there you go. Um, I did, actually. I uh I'll probably rip a, a little chunk of this off now that you mention it. It's gonna be hot as shit. But We, uh, we made sushi earlier, and the chicken parm I had was really good. It's all from the same shop. But, nice little skin, uh, Asian-style barbecue with uh, some mirin, jalapeno, uh, a little bit of ponzu sauce, and some adobo rub on the skin to help get it nice and crispy and darken it up. Um, sushi? Crispy. The barbecue sauce definitely penetrated into the meat really well. Um, it's really good. Really good. The, um, so the tomatoness of the uh, of the sauce is definitely like, especially if you bake it, kind of falls to the background a little bit, and the sweetness comes out of the tomato. Oh yeah. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, this is really good. Very good. I, 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 I have a community night to do. I gotta, I gotta stop eating this. I'm ready for golf. Really good though. Cooked all the way through. Good job. raised by a single mother. I actually have four parents, but I was taught to cook and I enjoy cooking. And the reason why I'm a married femboy house husband is because I know how to cook. Um, but yeah, this was the basis of it. It's just Wegmans Asian barbecue sauce. It's pretty damn good. Um, another one, if you have a Wegmans near you, um, 
they have, yes, I also have a gallon jug of Sweet Baby Ray's Rayanne. Uh, Carolina Gold. If you're looking for a tart, tangy mustard base. Right. So let's start getting the shit set up for Jimmy. Butter and corn go together. Uh-huh. Listen, there are no such thing as gender rules. And there shouldn't be. You should do what makes you happy. And I don't expect anything out of anyone. My wife says she wants to cook dinner. I let her cook dinner. But generally, I like doing it. I like cooking. I don't think that's very gendered. Right. I'm going to start breaking stuff down. So... Yeah, get in the uh, Discord, we'll do an hour and a half of golf. Be a good time. Right. So, thanks for hanging out for the cooking stream, y'all. Uh, appreciate the gift subs and the gift of Roonies. Um, there is the Discord if you want to hang out with us. There is the YouTube if you want to catch up on the cooking streams. I am also an avid motorcycle rider, so there are moto vlogs up there. There's going to be a catalog of our RPG playthroughs as well as the uh, speedrun PBs and tutorials. MPT, have a terrific night, friend. Get your rest. I know uh, I needed it today. Um, there is the link to the stream wish list. Feel free to toss any sort of suggestions on there. And thank you much for the support. This has been the, uh, I guess, technically part two of the Femboy Feast uh, this month because, well, we're in Japan. I don't know if we'll do a second cooking stream. We'll see how it goes. All right, cool. Let's start. Um, I'm just going to... I wanted to check this one because the camera has been a little bit weird. <laughs>